for this game. I didn't see this game at all. But we'll look at it. Sindarov is an excellent uh, young player. He might be 2021 20, by now, but he might be 15. Only the chat knows, and they're not telling. Go Sindarov. I can't believe Sindarov beat somebody who has a longer name than him. Okay, so this is against uh, Vaishali, Ramesh Babu, Bishop B5 Sicilian, which I've had black in this position many times, and this position, and this position, and this position. Ah, D3. Normally I face ED, Knight D5, D4, Knight F6, as in the famous stem game Carlson Gelfand, which white won quite convincingly. D3 is a slower approach. D4 is okay. Attacking the pawn on E5. Sacrifices the pawn. The engine wants to take it. You don't play queen C7 then not take it. I mean, you didn't play queen C7 to not take it. So she takes it. Bishop F4. Bishop D6. Queen H5. The engine says all these moves are great. Okay, and white's down a pawn, but white has fantastic compensation. I have this great bishop, your bishop sucks. Knight e4 wins my pawn back if it's my move. Knight c4 looks good. Open file for the rook. This knight's not really very well placed. So the engine says white's a tiny bit better. Okay, she castled, engine agrees, knight e4. Queen c7. Engine doesn't like queen c7. It wants to play queen d8 or queen b6. Queen c5. Now you have to trade queens. And the engine doesn't like this endgame for black. But yeah, it looked like she was going to be slightly worse anyway. Now she's just clearly worse. Rook a7 is the best move. Engine approved. Knight goes to b3. Rook d8 is forced. Defending the pawn. Knight a5, the b-pawn can't move because of knight c6, and the bishop can't move because the b-pawn's hanging. Although the engine does play bishop d7. I guess there's rook b8 counterplay. She played knight e7, that's also good. a4, gaining space. Knight d5, and knight d5 is a blunder. So this was the last chance to play bishop d7, so we can put something on c6. And then if knight b7, we play rook b8 and have counterplay. After bishop d7, white has a nice advantage, but not winning. And after this, white's winning. Takes. Rook takes. Knight c4. And this is just a, just a terrible bishop. a5 is a good move. Knight b6. The engine wants to play rook a3, rook b3, and come in this way. But this is also very good. In fact, in this position, rook c5 is a mistake. She should play rook d8. But normally, when you have a choice of like an active move or a passive move, you play the active move. Passivity usually doesn't work. But this move, this move is bad because of rook, uh, rook e4. And if you take on c2, which looks natural, thanks, Fen Beingold, rook takes d4. You can't stop rook d8 check winning your bishop. There's no defense. So we don't have time for that. So e5, and now we trade, and we're a pawn up in the end game, and you can't win your pawn back because of rook check here. And these pawns are all sort of loose. This is a relatively easy, easily winning end game for white. Never play f6. The engine really hates the move f6. But again, she's trying to play active instead of passive. So if the rook doesn't go to e2, that she can take and get counterplay. Unfortunately, f6 crushes her seventh rank. And even though she wins her pawn back, it's even more lost. Now I'm going to move my rook here and double on the seventh rank, and it's over. And this rook isn't playing. Yeah, and this is just completely winning. 
H4, put it in H. Fixing the pawn on H5. Threatening mate, rook has to go to A8, and now G4. This is very nice. So his idea is after takes, I want to play H5, H6, rook check, rook check, mate. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to make some random moves. This is his idea. That's why he played H4. So G4, and this is the plan. Rook B6. She wants to play F5 and stop H6. And he just takes with the rook. And now he's up a pawn. And if it's white's move, if white plays rook here, here, and, and you can't save your rook, I'm going to check and take your rook. And if you play rook somewhere where you can save your rook, then you're hanging your a5 pawn. So it says that white's up plus nine. Also, this pawn's hanging. So black resigned here. Wow, that was a really nice game from Cinderov. He made a lot of nice moves that game. That was very smooth. Femme Beingold gave five subs. What else? I really like that game from Cinderov. That was nice. Cinderov not having a great tournament because, you know, everybody's good. And Vaishali's a little overmatched, so she's getting good experience playing all these GMs. You could see she's 230 points lower rated than her opponent. So she wasn't expecting to win all our games. You know. You're just trying to get the experience. Playing a round robin, play GMs every round, etc. And this tournament has three or four players that are, you know, 23, 2400 feet a. And then it has like five players that are 2600, you know, feet a plus. So there's some mismatches. It's never obvious you're going to win, but here it is. It has nice technique too. From Cinderov. Is he from Uzbekistan or I'm making that up? Probably I'm making it up. What is Uzbekistan? That's what I thought. Like he's bored too after um, Abdus Satorov, I guess. I guess that's why they won the Olympiad, because they're good. Benjamin Bach rated with a party of 260. It's all about the Benjamins. Go, Benjamin Bach. Thanks for the raid. Everybody give him a shout out.